What is up you guys? My name is Orion with Move More, Eat Better. Today we're going to talk about grass-fed, grass-finished beef, where it comes from, and the process that goes into regenerative farming. I'm really fortunate to have a friend up here in northern Colorado who owns a farm. His name is Dan and his farm is called Rooted Vision Valley. He invited us up for lunch the other day and it was a really great experience, not only for the kids to run around, get some fresh air, but also to see where our food comes from and the process that goes into raising cattle. I shot some video up there that I thought was really cool to kind of paint the picture. When we're done with the video, I'll go over why grass-fed, grass-finished beef is a superior protein source and what the benefits are when it comes to the environment. So we'll start off with some, some baby sheep. No one can argue with that. So this is the farm right here. Dan has been uh, running the farm for two years. He inherited the land from his father who used to grow crops on there. Dan made the, the decision to switch things up and go the regenerative farm direction. So he has 80 acres and about 40 plus head of cattle on this farm and about 40 plus head of sheep on this farm. And it is spring, so there's a lot of little calves and a lot of little sheep, little lambs running around on the farm. It's a really cool uh, cool thing to see all these new babies running around and interacting. So we'll get to the video here. As you can see, the, the cows are very, um, very friendly and they're very docile and they'll come up to you and they'll sniff you and they want to see what's going on. So it, it's really a unique experience. Got some good sirloins cooking right here. <laughs> So how regenerative farming works is the, the land that the cows are on is divided up into sections. And how it goes is you move the cows from pasture to pasture. Now the pastures are divided um, unequally by a electric fence. So a low voltage electric fence, the cows touch it and they know not to touch it again. So they, Dan, what he does is moves them, opens up the fencing moves them into the next plot of land, and then they graze that for a couple days, maybe a week, and then he moves them again. So they're just basically rotating around the field. So in this particular shot right here, he opened up the fencing and they're getting ready to go into some fresh grass here. So they're pretty excited. They're getting ready to get after it and you'll see them start to run towards that new fresh food there. See, they're, 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 they're ready to get after it giving a little cow call there. Now the sheep that graze with the cattle, they're a little slow to move, so they saw what was going on and then they got they got moving right there. A lot of, lot of little babies running around. A lot of, lot of kids making noise. Brought the kids out there, they absolutely loved it. I think it's important for kids to see where their food comes from. And I think it's important for adults to see where their food comes from too. Burgers just don't fall from the trees. There's a, there's a big process that goes into it. Um, and the regenerative farming process is that much more difficult, but the reward is so high and what the, the impact it has on the environment and our health. And it's a, it's a truly rewarding thing to not only um, uh, be able to vote with our dollars essentially and contribute to the farm but it's also um it's just a really cool experience to see and I'm very fortunate to have this opportunity so as you can see the cows are now in the new uh cows and sheep are in the new plot of land there and um what dan was basically saying there is sometimes the sheep don't always um, go the direction you want them to go. So there was a couple caught on the fence. Now what he'll do, and you'll see this a little bit here, is he'll start rolling up the electric fence to basically expand the area that they're eating in. And then he'll move the fence over um, to basically cut them off from the area he doesn't want them in. So little sheep there got lost. Little lamb got lost from his uh, mama there. And you can see Dan's rolling up the, the fence right there.
And just look at how tall that grass is. That's what natural growing grass looks like and the cows will bring it down and then Dan will move them and it'll grow just really quick. There's a lot of that action going on, a lot of animals chasing each other. And as you guys can see, it's absolutely beautiful, tall grass, wide open land. And then concluding with a couple baby sheep right there. So that's where our food comes from. That's where, where, where grass fed, grass finished beef comes from and, and lamb for that matter too. Now, what I want to do next, you guys, is kind of go over the, the benefits of eating grass-fed, grass-finished beef, as well as the benefits that it has on the environment. So the goal is to seek to mimic the natural ecosystems to optimize the health of the soil, the plants, the animals, and the people that consume the products. Why is this optimal? So this is a great picture that's really representative of agriculture, and, and nature kind of the different strategies here. So with our modern day industrial farming processes, we're gonna basically, they are seeking to yield the most profit. So they're gonna hybridize the crops, they're gonna have them growing as quickly as possible, and that's gonna lead to less nutrient dense food. Now, if you see on the right hand side of this picture, you can see that's very short root system there, and it's, it's meant and it's designed to maximize profit. Now, on the left hand side, you can see how deep those roots go and what nature is actually supposed to be doing and supposed to how it's supposed to be growing in nature. Now, who knows if this picture is real or not or what the context behind it is, but it's it's probably pretty darn close when it comes to a visual representation of industrial farming versus natural farming. When it comes to the environment, there's going to be a lot of pros that come with regenerative farming. The first one being it's going to replenish the health of the soil. Basically, we're going to increase the organic matter, we're going to increase the so or enhance the soil fertility, and we're going to improve water retention. These are all three really big aspects of regenerative farming that really help with making the soil new again. When you're spraying pesticide on the crops and they're not being allowed to um, do what they would naturally do, you're going to wind up with a depleted soil. All right. Now, next, we will, it's going to naturally sequester carbon. So all this extra CO2 that we're worried about in the atmosphere, regenerative farming actually helps sequester that. So you're bringing that ox or that carbon dioxide that's in the atmosphere, and you're basically creating what's called a carbon sink. And this will absorb the atmospheric CO2, thus reducing greenhouse gases. So definitely a win-win for the environment and for the soil. Next, it's going to prevent soil erosion. So this is actually a big deal because our crops don't have any, our modern crops don't have any roots to them. So the soil is getting eroded very quick. So a healthy root system is going to promote water infiltration and water retention. So that picture I showed you of the, the, the deep roots, that's, imagine that soaking up the water and really holding the soil together. And that's a key aspect. Also, it improves soil biodiversity. Uh, by avoiding the use of synthetic pesticides and fertilizers, regenerative farmers are creating habitats that support a wide range of plants, insects, birds, and other wildlife, allowing pollination, pest control, and overall ecosystem health. So this is how it's supposed to be. We're not supposed to have just one single crop that's heavily sprayed with chemicals where it kills all the bio, kills all the plants and all the animals and basically eliminates the biodiversity of that ecosystem. This is how it's supposed to be done. We want plants, insects, small little animals um, interacting together and really making everything in that ecosystem healthy. The cows come into play. They work really well in the system. The, the grass growing tall and the roots growing deep come into play in the system. So there's a lot of great things that come about when you look at the regenerative farming model. Let's shift gears real quick and we'll talk about what it does for our health, human beings. So consuming grass-fed, grass-finished meat is going to be a superior protein source, mainly because it's going to be very nutrient-dense. So the cows are eating what they're naturally supposed to eat. So they're going to be getting more nutrients from these plants, storing it in their muscle fibers. We obviously harvest the meat and we eat that meat. So the protein source is going to be far superior than what you would get with um, uh, commercial industrial processing of, of and raising of, of meat. Now, it's also going to be higher in omega-3 fatty acids. So traditional farming or industrial farming, I should say, 
the meat is grass is grain fed, grain finished. So you're going to wind up with a high omega six fatty acid ratio. This is bad for us. This is going to cause a ton of inflammation in our bodies. Now, when we eat meat that is higher in omega three fatty acids, that actually reduces inflammation. So grass fed, grass finished beef not only is a superior protein source because of the nutrient density of it, but it also has those omega three fatty acids, which are going to help reduce inflammation. It's going to be better tasting. I don't know if you guys have ever um, tried the two side by side, but I have, and you can definitely tell the difference between grass-fed, grass-finished, and grain-fed and grain-finished. And I think, in my opinion, the grass-fed, grass-finished tastes way better than the, the counterpart. It's going to also be void of synthetic chemicals and hormones. So since we're not spraying the crops, the glyphosate that goes onto the crops, the grains essentially that we're feeding the cows, Ergo, we don't have to give the cows any antibiotics because they're not getting sick. We don't have to pump them full of hormones. They're just going to live out their lives as they're naturally as, as naturally as they can and how they're supposed to. So the synthetic part of this whole thing is eliminated from the equation when you're doing regenerative farming. And then lastly, it's going to enhance our own personal microbiota because these cows are eating good quality grass that's growing in soil that's full of bacteria. And it's actually going to help our own personal microbiome and help that naturally occurring bacteria and buoy that gut brain health connection right there. So there's just a ton of good benefits when it comes to consuming grass fed, grass finished beef. So in conclusion, if you can get your hands on the higher quality protein source of grass fed, grass finished beef or lamb or whatever it might be, that free range chicken, free range pork, the, the higher quality, the better. I get it. It can be a little expensive. Would I rather see someone eat pizza and ice cream and the standard American diet and then forego the grain-fed, grain-finished beef? Absolutely not. Eat the grain-fed, grain-finished beef. But if you can choose um, grass-fed here and there or just incorporate it full-time, it's going to be way more beneficial for you in the long run. Thanks for watching this video, you guys. Subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. It helps me out, helps get my message out there, and I'll chat with you guys next time. Take care.